Welcome to the fight with Teddy Atlas. I'm Ken Rido, joined as always by the great author Teddy Atlas. Teddy, good to be with you. Good seeing you. Congratulations on the launch of your audio book today. Before we jump into it, I want to give a quick shout out to our newest sponsor, Athletic Greens. As I've said before, this is a product that I use myself. I reached out to them, asked them to sponsor the show because I like and um, enjoy and because the of it, you won the state. I'm going to jump in. I don't care. You you won the st- California state. Correct me if I'm wrong with the title, but I want to say congratulations. Uh, you won the California state marathon over the weekend. You just flew back from that, and uh, you did a great job. Congratulations. Thank you. It was the Malibu Half Marathon, which acted as the state championship for the half marathon. So I ran that in 113, but again, I'm 48 years old, so I have to give a lot of the credit to Athletic Greens. Yeah. I take it before every workout run. I mean, I take it every day, but yeah, thank you. I was, uh, was happy to win. Um, if you haven't checked out Teddy's book, please do so. It's available on uh, wherever you get your audio books, but Amazon.com has it on their uh, audio book app called Audible. And if you sign up for Audible, you get 30 days. They're not a sponsor. But if you do sign up, you get 30-day free trial, and you can download um, Teddy's book for free, essentially. Um, there's a ton of content there. for Even if you've read the print edition, there's a ton of new content and a bunch of in-between chapters, conversations with Teddy um, about a whole bunch of different topics. And um, But there's a topic that wasn't covered in the book, and um, having been in camp with Teddy for uh, eight weeks in the preparation for Alex Vosdick versus um, Otter Better Be of down in Philly, you and I spent uh, a lot of time together. And um, <laughs> there was just story after story of things that just seemed <laughs> incredible. And one of the stories, there was a whole lead into it of how we got into this and just we had access to a gym, a private gym and um, they shut it down and made it private for us for the hours we needed it, which super grateful to those guys, Mike Rafferty down in Philadelphia and Grace Ferry. Thanks, Mike. Um, Great guy, Mike Rafferty. Yep. A policeman in South Philly and uh, grew up in that area and, and a fighter. Oh, uh, yeah. A, a pro fighter and good amateur, good pro fighter. And a good person. Very good person, total gentleman. And um, one of the things that um, happened is we walked in one day, there were some people training, and we, you and I started talking about your old days training fighters at, um, <clears throat> at Gleason's when it was in Manhattan. And around... A uh, couple blocks away from the garden. Yep. Well, incredible place. A, one of the stories, uh, again, you, you were training um, Kevin Moley and Donnie Poole at the time in... Um, mid-1985, I think it was, because there was an article written about this by uh, Dick Young about an incident between you and Hector Camacho, who was at the like, peak of his like stardom at that point. And uh, Hector and his entourage came into the gym while you were there training your fighters. And uh, I'll let you take it from here, but you told me the story, and I know you're hesitant to tell this story, but Rob and I, Rob Moore, our production, uh, man... Uh, and myself pressured Teddy into Anything doing to this. Anything to sell books, right? <laughs> well, this show ought to sell a lot of books because this is one of the funniest stories you've ever told me. So uh, I'll let you take it from there. You're in the old Gleason's in Manhattan training, uh, like I first, said, Kevin Moley and Donnie Poole and Hector Camacho comes in yeah, with his game. first gang. of all, I want to be respectful to him because he's not with us anymore, mm-hmm. you know? And um, that's a shame that, I mean, he's gone. He's He's... Uh, Hector Camacho was killed, mm-hmm. so that's a that's a tough thing, mm-hmm. you know. That's a bad thing, obviously. And uh, and he was a terrific fighter. I thought he had the fastest hands, maybe the fastest hands I've ever seen. And I'm talking about Pacquiao speed. Mm-hmm. Pacquiao's pretty damn fast. <clears throat> I mean, Camacho was that fast and uh, that good, and and a showman. That's what I was gonna say. World class showman. You know, before before the Mayweather's and the you know some of these other guys, as good as great as Mayweather is. I mean, but but he was he was one, he was one of the uh, pioneers of that. Oh yeah, he loved a good uh, animal print, leopard skin trunks coming into the weigh in in like um, you know bikini brief underpants. He was out there. He was always up to something. He had that curl in the front of his hair. His head was all sh- short except for a long curl that would hang good down in front kid, of the you head. You know, a good looking kid and a kid from Spanish Harlem. Yep. You know, New York and. uh New York Golden Glove champion, you know, homebred kid, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, came from tough stuff. Mm-hmm. He uh, he was a personality, you know. He was his, you know, he was his own uh, his own guy that way, 
and uh, he was out there and you know controversial in the way he, I guess, did things. And, like a Deion Sanders. Yeah, that's yeah. what he reminds me of. Like always pumping his reputation and and self promoting. Yeah, he was. He was smart. Mm. I mean, he knew how to why he was doing that. Yeah, you know, to sell tickets to you know to obviously make money and get more attention and you get more attention you make more money in mm-hmm. any business in show business and boxing and baseball you know some guys uh grow big beards in baseball and they uh they get commercials yeah i think it was was it ali who said um i don't care half the people come to see me win the other half come to see me lose but everyone's paying everyone's buying a ticket yeah you know so yeah well I guess we're going to do this. I guess I've tap dance around trying to not do it. <laughs> I can see you now trying to avoid doing it. Long enough, right? Either do it or don't do it. Exactly. Hopefully I do it with enough uh, respect, as I just said, for a guy who's not here no more. So he had an entourage. And that was another thing, that he wasn't the guy who invented the entourage. Ali had an entourage. You know, a lot of great fighters had entourages. uh you know, it goes back to Sugar Ray Robinson was one of the first guys with an entourage who was from Harlem. And he was, Sugar Ray Robinson was, some people think the greatest fighter of all time. Had close to 200 fights and uh, probably about 115 or 110 knockouts. What a great fighter. Wow. But, you know, they're showmen, they're, you know, and that's part of it. Part of, part of being a Great fighters being able to, as you just touched on, being able to sell tickets because you want to make money at it too. You want to be successful in all ways, in the ring and outside the ring. And part of the success in the ring is, you know, what revenue you can bring besides, you know, what you can do with your fist and with your legs. And um, and Camacho did it with both. So he was obviously knew what kind of image he wanted to put forward. You know, he wanted to... Uh, he wanted to provoke a certain image, and, and he did. And here he came with his entourage. He came in, and, you know, they were wearing the, what time is it, macho time shirts, <laughs> you know. You got one of them? No. No. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, they come in, and Camacho would wear his jewelry, you know, like uh, a lot of guys do. But he, he was, back then, it was a different time. We're talking 35 years ago. Yep. 34 years, whatever. And... uh. So, you know, he had all his chains and everything and come in there with his entourage and a whole crew of guys. He had this guy, Raymond, who was in a wheelchair. He was he was part of the entourage and, you know, some a whole bunch of guys. And like I said, what time is it? Macho time shirts. Can so, I add one quick thing before you continue? Lest anyone thinks that this is um, just for the promotion of the book. There's an article that we're trying to find now. We just It's not available online because it's 34 years old, but it was by Dick Young. Cause they were I hope people. people would know if you're watching the show that we wouldn't do that. Of course. I hope, I hope that you would know we have a little bit more integrity than that. But go ahead. That's exactly the point I was going to make. But there is an article, and uh, we're looking for it, so... Go ahead. I just want you to. I, I want you to tell the story exactly how it happened. Yeah. So we we're in the gym and I'm there training Kevin Moley and Donnie Paul. I had I'm trying to remember who else I had, but and Kevin Moley had a fight coming up. I believe at the time with Wilfred Benitez, the great Wilfred Benitez, who was on the other side of his career, quite frankly. And uh, Moley was about 21 and 0, somewhere around there. He was an undefeated kid from Long Island, and. Um, so I'm training him, and Donnie Poole was a Canadian welter. We won a Canadian welterweight title together. Uh, he was a he was a tough little, exciting little welterweight. He looked like uh, more like a junior welterweight. He wasn't big, but he was an exciting kid, tough kid, and uh, he was being managed by by a guy who was very good at developing fighters, Dave Wolf. Mm. Uh, so he uh, so. I'm in there with them, and I think Kevin Moley was the guy at the time. And <clears throat> we're we're in the we're getting in the ring to spar. There was two rings in Gleason's. There was a balcony, and there was a there was a two rings in the in the main part of the gym balcony where people could watch from the balcony and lockers up there and lockers in the back and uh, and a shower in the back. 
and uh, you could lose your toes if you went in that shower. But that was, <laughs> you know, they, they didn't have a sign up that said, you know, count your toes before you go in, but maybe they should have. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a tough place. And uh, like I said, it was a few blocks away from from uh, the Great Madison Square Garden. So it was quite a place. It was quite a place where f fighters and managers would come in and when uh, Duran would come in there and train before fights if he was fighting, you know, in New York or if he was traveling through New York for press stuff, he would come in and uh, spend the day training. So you had a lot of great fighters in there. And like I said, the, you could train your fighters. I did it. You train your fighters and then you walk across the street to the garden for a fight that night. Mm -hmm. You train your fighters during the day that weren't fighting. They, you know, at that time weren't scheduled yet. And then you you walk two blocks and you go to the garden. I mean, really great time. Think about the thin man, Nick Baffey, my friend who's gone now. He was a manager, fighters, trainer, Joe Baffey. God, miss those guys. And uh, so here we are, I'm in there working, you know, this is where I work. And he comes in with his whole crew, Camacho, Hector, and you know, they come in there and make a little noise and it's all right, noisy place. And I'm in the ring, I'm in the ring with uh, Kevin Moley and a small partner we were paying, getting ready for this fight. And so we're, we're getting ready and all of a sudden at some point, Camacho jumps in the same ring. There's two rings, and he decides to jump in the ring with us. And you know he knows what's going. It's not like a guy who doesn't understand that we're getting ready to spar. I mean, it's he's he's a world champion, and uh, he sees we get headgear on. We're getting ready to go. But you know he gets in there, and the protocol is uh, obviously you could get in the ring while we're in there. But when the bell rings, then you get out because you go into another ring because uh, that's not being used. You get out. Obviously. And the other ring wasn't being used at the time? Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, there was maybe guys, uh, maybe shadow boxing and mm -hmm. stuff. And you, you might get five guys, six guys, seven guys in a ring shadow boxing, yep. you know? And uh, and like I said, you, it's, you know, you have people come and they would sit in the front. There was like cement block in the front and they would sit and watch. Mm -hmm. So you had people in there, businessmen sometimes in there, you know, in between lunch, in between meetings, they come in and just watch boxing. You know, I mean, how great was that? Mm -hmm. I mean, where are you going to go? Watch boxing. You know, what would you do today? Doing lunch, I went and watched uh, the Ranspa. Or I watched a few guys. I mean, really. <laughs> I couldn't think even about imagine it. someone I mean, coming into one of your camps and being like, hey, do you mind if I watch yeah. uh, Alex Vostick's spar today? Yeah. <laughs> but in those days, you know, it was, it was open and people yeah. come in and it was Gleason's gym. World famous Gleason's gym. So we were in there getting ready to work and ready to get ready for this very important fight. All fights are important. And all of a sudden, Camacho jumps in there with his shorts on, his, you know, short shoes and no shirt, and um, and uh, baby oil. He 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 was all greased down with baby oil. <laughs> Some of the fighters did that. They they used to use different things, different products to sweat. Mm -hmm. You know, he put baby oil. I wouldn't use that, but some guys did. Uh, you know, some guys would use something else. Of, I'm trying to remember the name of the product. A Avatine. Uh, not Avatine. That was for cuts. Um, um, Sweet sweat. No, no. Yeah, no, yeah, but th th they came up with those products later. But this it's was like a the product. Generic term. This, yeah, this was a product that people just, the old timers, they just, they found it. It, it was like, uh, it was a clear, it was a clear thing. It was white and it would come in a jar and... Um, it was clear, and you would rub it on the fighters. It would make them sweat, mm -hmm. and and it it it, it had no uh, oil base to it. Mm -hmm. it. Didn't have any grease. It wasn't like Vaseline. Some people would put Vaseline on to to loosen up to the sweat. And um, I'm trying to remember what the name of this was. And other guys would put this on the thing. I like putting if I used anything, it would make you sweat, and it wouldn't clog your pores. You know, it was very light, mm -hmm. and like I said, it didn't have a it had it had no grease uh, base to it. Or oil based to it, but this particular uh, Camacho liked to put baby oil on <laughs> Johnson's baby oil, <laughs> yeah, and all of them. <laughs> and so he's in there, <laughs> he's all greased up, and um, he's shadow box, he just starts shadow box. All right, so uh, I don't say nothing because again, it's a protocol, you know, uh, you don't have to say nothing when the bell rings, get out. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to spar. Mm -hmm. We don't have headgears on because our ears are cold. <laughs> it's just like common courtesy. It's well, like I mean, gym yeah. etiquette. And everyone know. knows I mean, it. It's like in any sport or exactly. any any business that, that figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. I mean, um, 
You know, you go into a, you can go into a chambers of your lawyer. You go into a, you, you go into the courtroom, and when the judge is in there, you could talk and you could maybe walk around and stuff. When the judge walks in, you, you're not talking, you're not walking around no mm -hmm. more. Yeah, no, exactly. You're, you're finding your seat because the judge is there because you know where you are. Mm -hmm. I'm in a courtroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. I got it. You know, if, if you go on a roller coaster in Coney Island, you sit down <laughs> because if you stand up, you you're not gonna finish the ride, <laughs> right? I mean. So it's like you said, common, common, just everybody knows. And um, you shot a box and all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, my senses are keen now mm -hmm. because he's got a reputation of being a little bit of a guy that... Uh, a bully. Uh, I don't know. I'm, you could say that. I don't know. You call him that. I'm not that to me is a bully. I'm, like, I'm call the him best a bully. fighter. I'm going to use uh, you well, in ring. Well, whatever. I don't know if it's a bully, but he, he had a little bit of an attitude. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Hey, maybe a little arrogance, you know. Maybe he earned it by by some in his mind, you know. But you don't have to act that way, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, there comes a time to be just just to have a common respect. And uh, all of a sudden, the bell rings, you know. So now the next bell is going to be work. The bell rang, ending that round, and so uh, I wait for him to get out. But he don't get out. So um, I said to him, you know, we're going to spar. You know. So he said, yeah. I said, so get out of the ring. You know, I didn't say it in the, but um, it was getting to that, you know. Yeah. You get to, you get there kind of quick in certain <laughs> places. You know, I mean, really, what are we talking about? So I said, you know, he said, Macho, I still remember 34 years, 35 years. Macho man don't move for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I say it in a way that, you know, I'm trying to say it in a respectful manner and get the F out. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what happened. Mm -hmm. Get the F out of the way. Yeah. Make macho man, you know. I yeah. mean, you know what comes next. And um, so I turned to my, I, the spawn partner got out. <laughs> <laughs> he he kind of knew, you know, what time is it? Macho time. He knew what time it was. <laughs> so the small part, I didn't have to say none. I turned to my fighter. I said, "Get out of the ring," and um, he said, "Teddy, let's let's let it go." Uh, he, you know, the truth is the truth. I mean, it's not taking nothing away from, but maybe he was being more sensible than me, you know. Yeah. But I thought I was being sensible, to be quite honest. And and you got to live in a place like this too. That's right. Tomorrow comes. Tomorrow comes. You know what I mean. Tomorrow comes. So um, told my at that point I told my uh, he said Teddy let's let go we could you know we could wait or whatever whatever he said I said get out of the ring. <laughs> so he got out. I can I can just picture this play you know for people who know Teddy from TV uh -huh. you don't know him from training camp it's like two different uh, people. No, I just said so get out. Yeah. So now it was me and him and we squared off. With gloves or no gloves? No, no gloves. <laughs> I don't wear gloves when I train someone. <laughs> you know? And, yeah, and, yeah. and he, he he had no gloves. I mean, he was just, he had baby oil. Yeah. And and his shorts, you know, and his shoes. And, you know, he was he was just warming up. And uh, I didn't get a chance to warm up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no baby oil. So we just, you know, that's it. We went at it. And we, we, uh, we started boxing. But fighting and but but in a proper way you know boxing yeah and um and are people you know, are people watching no one's yeah the gym, the gym at this point uh we listen it's quite a place gleason's yeah some of the people in there adolfo virouette edwin virouette they both fought duran they both fought duran i think one of them fought him twice but no they both fought duran they, they were my guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were crazy. Yeah. And I'm saying in a loving way. Mm -hmm. But they had like 15 brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. And, and they were all, most, well, they were terrific fighters. And Edwin Virouette was a lightweight. Uh, Adolfo was like a welterweight, junior middleweight. Adolfo fought Sugar Ray Leonard too. 
So these are real guys. Yeah, and, yeah. and they're in there. This is what, how they make their living now. They, they train white collar guys. White collar stuff was just starting. Mm-hmm. Just starting. And, and they train fighters, you know, but they, they make their, they, they really make their money during the day with, uh, getting $10 back in those days, uh, training a white collar guy. But they, they were funny. They'd make money all kinds of ways. They charge you $5 to tie your hand wraps. <laughs> <laughs> I, they were great. Yeah. I mean, I, they were great, but they were, they were tough guys, you know, mm-hmm. and, but they were my guys. You so know? they were in there with you and, cause, well, they were in Camacho there in the gym. His, well, yeah, right. and, well, they won't, they didn't know they were going to be with me that day. I mean, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they're just there doing what they're doing. And then this stuff happened, you know, and, uh, So, you know, and there's, the, the gym is busy. And mm-hmm. then all of a sudden, you know, I'm not paying attention. I'm kind of focused on what's in front of me. And, but obviously, the everybody started catching on to what's going on here. And next thing you know, they're all around the ring and, you know. And no one's trying to intervene well, and no, say, I mean, guys, guys, come on. No, I mean, it, 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 you know when something just happens and, yeah. it, like, you don't have time, to, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And Ira Becker was the only. I think Bruce Silverglader bought into the gym at that point. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he's the owner now in Brooklyn. But he had bought into it at some point. But at one point, Ira Becker was the sole owner. I mm-hmm. think the two of them had been partners already. I'm not sure. I'm not positive. But Ira, he's gone too. God bless him. He was he was a character too. Good mm-hmm. Good guy. You know, he charged you a dollar to come in, two dollars <laughs> to come in. You know, yeah, whatever it was back in those days. And um, so here we are. You know, that's it. And we're f- we're going. So you know, we're f- and I'm thinking, you know, th- this guy. You know, I better use my jab. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so I start shooting a jab, and he slips it. You know, he slips it, and so I thinking to myself, I better lower it. You know, I better jab him to the chest you know hit, yeah. just to to try to use my strength to keep knock him off balance and then maybe i could get a shot in you know yeah. so so it was funny so i throw i throw it to the chest and i throw it up here you know he goes like this yeah i throw it up here and it slides right off <laughs> it's baby yeah. Off. yeah 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 <laughs> and i'm like i feel like i'm fighting an icicle <laughs> a popsicle you know what i mean yeah. i mean he's a thin guy yeah like i'm in there with a cherry popsicle or something or at whatever. the time what was the oh, size was popsicle how much did you weigh and how much was he weighing no i That's don't know I, I was in good shape back then but uh, i mean uh, he was a 135 thirty-five pound champ, right, or the hundred thirty pound champ of the world. So he's probably like in one fifty. So, no, no, uh, yeah, he might have been maybe I don't know. He might have been forties. Uh, he might have been in his forties, maybe maybe in a hundred forties, forty-seven. I don't know. Yeah. And and maybe back then, God, I was back then. I might have been a hundred fifty. You okay. know, so it was close size. Maybe maybe a hundred forty-seven, maybe a hundred fifty or fifty something. You know, it was, I mean, we, we didn't get on a scale, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't sanctioned. So now we're in there and, uh, hey, he's the, he, who cares what I weighed? This, yeah. He's a lot better fighter oh. than me. <laughs> and and um, so I, I throw the punch and it slides off, you know. And, I, yeah. you know, I, obviously I register it. Like, all right, you know. So, then, uh, so anyway, I throw another jab. He moves and. He, he comes back with starts drawing jabs yeah and um you know i blocked i think i blocked one of them and i think one of them hit me and uh so i'm i'm thinking to myself you know i better change this up a little bit mm. you know so um i throw something out he throws a couple quick punches again i i got away from the jab but i think he clipped me on the head with the right hand or whatever you know no big deal it was we were both looking to you know we're feeling each other out yeah <laughs> You know, if you were commenting, yeah, feeling each other out, mm-hmm. and um, but then I thought to myself, I I can't freaking, I don't think uh, I'll be doing too well. To continue with this strategy with this guy, <laughs> exactly. so I fainted him. I gave him a faint, you know, yeah. and he, you know, he pulled back, and uh, I thought to myself, I got to change this up. So you know, we're going for a minute, you know, minute and a half, maybe, yeah. you know, going, and uh, I tried to throw a right hand to his body. And again, I threw the right hand to the body. I hit him, I think, on the side, and and it slid right off. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was like literally like I was like I, I had grease all over my hands now, <laughs> like you know. And so I'm thinking I gotta get to where I can get a hold of him mm-hmm. because uh, I ain't gonna win this way. Yeah. So I fainted him again. I saw what he did the first time. So I fainted him again. I said, "Figure we're in the you know." Right? Yeah. And, you know, like I said, I 
good minute and a half has gone by, whatever, somewhere. A fan of me pulls back and I just, real quick, because he actually threw a punch as I did it. But I don't know if he caught me. I don't think he caught me. Um, but I was so focused on what I had to do. I grabbed his hair. I just, like, I, I act like I was going to throw and I just went forward and I grabbed his hair. <laughs> and I pulled him, you know, I pulled him into me. I mean, yeah. I don't think I was going to win a boxing match. You know? <laughs> no, I wouldn't think so. So, um, and we did enough. I said, that's, all right, that's enough of doing that. So I brought him into me, you know, yeah. real, real close, and I hit him with an uppercut. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I hit him with a knee, too, <laughs> you know, and I had him. Once I had him, I felt that I, you know, and the funny thing was I, even when I had him, I thought to myself, I better not let go of his head his hair because he was so greasy he was like holding an eel yeah yeah, yeah. like he, he went to weave out from under me and his body rubbed against me and like he, he got out and i still had him this way you yeah. know i had to pull him back in again mm-hmm. because he, everything was rubbing everything that touched me just slid mm-hmm. and he like slid to the side of me i was like oh shoot i better hold on so i grabbed him and hit him a few more punches in the body you know like, like dirty like, boxing like not, not dirty i mean just hitting him around the ribs and had him real close to me and i you know i just knew that if i'm I'm gonna keep him here he ain't going <laughs> you know and um are and the that, people that are watching are they cheering yeah there's you? noise because i'm i'm i mean i'm kind of focused on camacho yeah you know and um there's a lot of noise all of a sudden next thing i know there's there's like a, a punch coming over my shoulder and it was one of his guys wow jumped in the ring went right in in the ring and went right after me but it didn't i mean i it didn't mean anything like he threw a punch and like went off my shoulder but i was just i wasn't uh, unless they brought in the national guard i wasn't letting go of him i was mm-hmm. gonna because if i let go of him we're back to that um that quick jab again yeah and right hands you know and i know what follows jabs right hands you know <laughs> and left hooks and um, so I got him, and all of a sudden, I don't have a problem no more. All of a sudden, uh, the, you know, I, I'm thinking to myself, here comes the whole entourage. Yeah. And uh, the Villarreal took care of it. They they grabbed this guy by the collar and pulled him right out of the ring. And, <laughs> and literally pulled him out of the ring. I think they pulled him out, like, in between the ropes, like where his head was hitting the ropes. And just <laughs> pulled him out of the ring. I think it was Adolfo. And um, they pulled him out, and they said, that ain't, that ain't basically uh, this ain't happening. It's gonna stay clean. You know, it's gonna it's the two of them. Mm-hmm. He started it. This is gonna be it. <laughs> and uh, and then they kind of yelled to me, Teddy, do what you want to do. You know, <laughs> you're you're good. You're good. You know. And um, so they said, go ahead, Teddy. You know, whatever. It's it's you you too. There ain't gonna be no trouble. Ain't mm-hmm. gonna be no interference. No problem. And uh, he he had them put away, you know. He had one of them on the floor. The other ones they they weren't going up against these guys, <laughs> you know. So uh, that was it. And I we uh, yeah, you know, I said a few things in his ear. Said a couple things to him. I called him a couple things that weren't so nice, mm-hmm. but he um, I thought it it was okay at that point. But and he just quietly said, okay, you know, basically. You know, I I had him by the headlock now and uh, said that stop, you know. So, uh, like I said, I hit him a couple shots, but at that point, it was funny. Um, Adolfo kept yelling, you know, no, no, we keep going, you know, like, he was, <laughs> you know, because he's, <laughs> they, they didn't love Camacho, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, they probably for different reasons, you know. And, um, hey, listen, Camacho was a millionaire, and he's uh, not that you, he earned it the right way and everything uh, in the ring, and they know that better than anybody. But these are guys that never made that money. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not saying that's why. But, you know, and he, it's not like uh, he was inviting them out to dinner. But you still have a responsibility to treat people with respect just because you've outperformed them and out-earned them doesn't mean that you're special I don't to know them. how he treated them, but he was in his own little place. Mm-hmm. You know, you get in your own place sometimes. I mean, it's easy to judge, mm-hmm. but, you know, unless you're there, I don't know. He he got in his own place and, 
he was he felt comfortable in that place and he didn't have to worry about because sometimes you get insulated by these guys these whatever you want to call them yes men uh jock sniffers whatever you want to call them that's mm-hmm. we're talking the truth and you know he he had that around him so he didn't have to but today he didn't have them mm-hmm. on that day <laughs> we had adolfo and edwin real wet and a few other guys that didn't they didn't care about that stuff they you know they didn't care about what time it was <laughs> You know, and um, so he just said to me, you know, he just said, you know, okay. And I said a few things to him, and he said, all right, no, done, you know. And um, I let him go and pushed him away, and and uh, that was pretty much the end of it. The the Vioettes, you know, they they had these guys like scraggly dolls. These these other guys that aren't fighters mm-hmm. that thought they were whatever they thought they were. They found out they weren't <laughs> real quick. Yeah, you know, I guess they never really been introduced to the boxing game. Just hanging out with a boxer doesn't mean you really understand boxing. Exactly. You know, I mean, they they came to I think they came to an understanding that day mm-hmm. when uh, Edwin and uh, Adolfo had him by the neck, and they. As quick as it started, it kind of you know the Adolfo and them said, "Get out! Come on! You unless you want more, you go." You know that. Uh, so they 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 basically left, and you know everything. Everybody then, of course, it was chaos. Everybody's talking about everything, and mm-hmm. you know, uh, and then Ira came over. Everybody and everything settled down. They left, and uh, I remember. God bless. God bless. Uh, Edwin, uh, not Edwin, Adolfo, the, the bigger guy. He comes over to me. He said, you do good. You do good. He said, you you could have stayed there. We, we had you. We have you, brother. We had you. We, you, we had you. You could stay there. Why you why you finish so fast? Mm-hmm. And I said, nah, I, was, I mean, thanks. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I mad at you for one thing. You do good. I mad for one thing. And I'm, uh, listen, uh, you know that old saying, you can't make this stuff up? Yeah. Right? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> and and don't uh, don't take them the wrong. But these are rough guys, yeah. you know. And of course, I'm sure he didn't mean it literally. But I can only tell you what he said. Adolfo says, "You don't." I said, "What's what's the matter, Adolfo?" Oh, one thing you disappoint a little bit, Daddy. I love you, but a little bit. Uh, you have him. That's Hector Camacho. You have by by here. You have him here. He can't do none of this. I said, "Yeah, that's why I had him there." <laughs> I know. I, no kidding. He kicked my. A. You know what? Yeah. He goes, but you have him. You have him there. You have one chance, and you should have used the old scoop. And I'm like the scoop. What do you mean a scoop? The scoop. You take thumb scoop eye, <laughs> <laughs> and and no more Camacho. No more problem. No more. Uh, what time is it? <laughs> we know what time it is. No more time. <laughs> like nah, Adafa. I didn't. I really appreciate it. Love you, but I don't think the scoop was. Uh, What's Called necessary? For. Nah, I don't think the scoop is necessary. The old scoop. No more career. No more career. But that shows you. And people are gonna say, "Oh, that, 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 that. listen, he wasn't gonna scoop someone's eye out." But uh, these are tough people, and these are people that like you go and you disrespect someone. They're thinking, "What do you take away from?" Them? They're trying to take something away from you. What? Your dignity, your pride, make a fool out of you, right? Mm-hmm. And you, a lot of times they can. And so what do you take from them? You take their career. That's, that's, I mean, it comes down to, I know that's a tough thing to be talking about. But there's different worlds out there. For sure. There's different worlds out there, you know, Ken. But anyway, so that was the, that was it. And a lot of commotion, a lot of, you know, blah, 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 blah. you see what happened? <laughs> the white collar guys, they, they had a good day. You know what I mean? They got a, they, they, they went to the cinema and they got a double feature. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and they didn't pay for their popcorn. They didn't pay for their drinks. <laughs> <laughs> they paid a dollar to get they, in though. They got milk duds. <laughs> they got their money's worth that day, yeah. you know? So they're like, oh, you see what happened? <laughs> you know, and, all. and I'm just like, you know, I'm just. And I got my man. I got my man Adolfo and Edwin with me. You know, and they're just like Teddy. Uh. And then uh, they throw me a towel. And I'm looking at the towel. Yeah, you you get uh, you get baby oil all over you. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. I I you know my wife. It was funny. I, I went home that day, and um, the, the the thing that I'm thinking, I'm on a ferry going home. Just that now, thing I'm thinking is like. Can I get this baby oil out of this shirt? Without, <laughs> like she's gonna say, 
that's baby oil because wives kind of know what that stuff is. Yeah. <laughs> and like, what are you doing with baby oil? Like, yeah. Are you in Greece today, right? <laughs> yeah, but you have baby oil all over you. <laughs> so I can't even. That we're not doing that story. We're, we're not doing that story. Okay. That that book or no book, sales or no sales. You know what I mean? You tell me, Rob over there, he's the man. But but he tells me, hey, you know, we'll we'll, we'll be on the New York Times, but so we ain't going that. But that <laughs> we'll, we'll have, find another way to do it. But um, so the next day comes. By the way, does he leave after this happens? Yeah, yeah. Does they he continue leave. training? No, they just no, leave? no. They leave. They all leave. And um, I think part of you know Adolfo and them made it clear they had to get out too. But uh, you know, I mean, you got to remember Adolfo and them. What we were not looking was probably smacking their their entourage around. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that they give him a few smacks in the face because that was the attitude like you yeah. behave like a pop pop you know like you, you you bad boy you know like <laughs> because they felt like they were you know those guys not Camacho but those guys that didn't that are doing something sneaky uh, they they should kind of be uh, dealt with they were, they should be disrespected a little bit or or treated the way with with without the respect the same way that they were going to do to someone else mm-hmm. you know they should be treated uh, appropriately and mm-hmm. to them that was appropriate to kind of show them what they were and remind them of what they weren't mm-hmm. and so anyway they uh they leave and then stuff starts happening like uh the the next day the next day ira comes up to me it might have been ira and bruce but the owner ira back he comes up to me he's like, can i talk to you yeah listen uh Camacho's people called uh, Raymond and somebody whatever called and wanted to know if he could come back to train but they want to apologize would would you let him come back <laughs> and it's not my gym yeah. you know what I mean yeah I, it was kind of weird uh, and but Ira wanted me to be there you mm-hmm. know well to the credit of Ira and to Bruce they didn't say hey look this is Hector Camacho get out you know he's coming back mm-hmm. they 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 were respectful they came over and I'm respectful I'm training fighters there mm-hmm. right? fighters are paying Jim Dews and I was one of the only guys that had a that had a, his own little office there. Victor Valley Senior had one. He trained Cooney. He trained mm-hmm. a lot of fighters. Uh, Billy Costello, who was junior welterweight champ of the world, terrific guy from Kingston, New York, good left hook, and of course Jerry Cooney. And he had a he had his own little office. I had one, and uh, that was about it. Mm-hmm. That was it. So you know they were good to me, and so they came to me in in a way I appreciated. They said, Teddy, listen. Well, we know what he did, and what, uh, but they called up and wouldn't be the worst thing to happen here, you know, yeah. because f- they they need promotion, right? Mm-hmm. And they're a boxing gym, uh, right? So you you want to have boxers in there, and the more marquee, the better. So I understood it. They said, but they were good. They were really respectful. They were good people. They said, Teddy, if, is it all right if they, they, they're calling to see if they could come back. What do you say? I said, it's your gym. Said yeah, but we want you to be comfortable, and uh, they're they're saying if they come back, they would apologize, and you know you wouldn't have a problem no more. I said, listen, if a man says he's going to apologize, he said they want to they want to know if they come back, and they would shake your hand. I say if a man's going to shake my hand, and man, I'm not into belittling anybody or making anybody feel like less than they should feel, but I don't want no one to do that to me, either. That's the whole point of this. That's how this got to where it got to. Mm-hmm. So of course, they want to come. What am I going to say to you? No, this is my place. This is my turf. You know, uh, now, now I put my flag down. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what, what are you kidding me? So I um, said, yeah, all right. So he said, oh, he's going to come by at this time and he'll come in and, you know, he'll come up to you and, and you know, say, say something like whatever. So I, so they came, everybody was, at that point was waiting for him. They pulled up, I guess. You know, I was inside. He came mm-hmm. in from outside and uh, just came over and, you know, put his hand out. That's it. I didn't want him to. I felt embarrassed myself. Like, I don't want the guy to feel that. I mean, I, I was appreciating that he, in my mind, he's saying he did something wrong. Mm-hmm. Right? He's saying he did something wrong and uh, he put his hand out and I shook his hand and he trained and I trained my fighters and... That was the you know that was the end of it. The the thing that was in the end of it was that uh, I had a fighter fighting 
I think it was, I don't know if it was two days later, the next day, two days later, whatever it was, I had a fighter fighting in the felt form. I'm trying to remember if it was the felt form or Madison Square Garden, but whatever it was, it was I think it was the felt form. Now, the felt form was the smaller arena at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, and then it was called the theater at Madison Square yeah. Garden. Now it's called like the Hulu Theater. It's just yeah. basically a smaller auditorium. But the felt form was a place where real fight fans went, where, where fighters got built up, mm-hmm. where fighters... And it was a terrific place, and and you had real, real action there. And I had somebody fighting. Again, it was either the garden, the big garden, or the fell form. Mm -hmm. And um, I had somebody fighting there the next day, two days later, whatever it was. And Teddy, I just want to interrupt for a second to take a quick pause and give another shout out to our newest sponsor, Athletic Greens. Again, I can't stress to you how uh, impressed I am with these guys. I've been using this product for over a year now. Um, it's my go-to product in terms of daily supplements, vitamins. Uh, it's the ultimate all-in-one supplement for the body with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. It includes prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, adaptogens, superfoods, and more. Special offer for our listeners. Get 20 free Athletic Green Travel Packs. Valued at $79 with your first purchase. Simply go to athleticgreens.com forward slash atlas to register, sign up for your first order. And again, they'll include the 20 free travel packs with you with that order valued at $79. Um, they know you'll love this product so much. They stand by with a 60 day money back guarantee. So give it a shot. If you don't like it, send it back. Send the unused portion back. They'll refund your money. That's how confident they are. So... I'm going to the weigh-in the next, again, the next day, whatever it was, I'm going to the weigh-in uh, the, in the morning. The weigh-in was in the morning at the downtown New York, uh, it was at the New York Athletic Commission downtown. Mm-hmm. I forget who the commissioner was at the time because we had commissioners. We had Floyd Patterson, Jose Torres, uh, Randy Gordon was the commissioner. We had, a, I can't remember who it was at that time, but... Anyway, um, I'm on my I'm on a ferry boat, the early ferry boat, going in there with the Wall Street crowd going across, you know, and I'm going to the weigh in and for whatever fight I had, I don't know if it was Donnie Poole or Kevin Molly. And as I'm sitting on a plane on a on a boat, you got all these young guys in suits, they they're all reading the paper, having their coffee and um I hear one of them, I think it was the New York Post, I hear one of them say, I'm glad he got his his, his backside kicked, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. You know, and I'm thinking, what are they talking about? You know, mm. kind of eavesdropping now. Mm. Yeah. And going, yeah, you see this, you know, you know, which is not true, I mean, but because I didn't go and freaking beat up, you know, it, it happened the way it happened. Yeah. I used the advantage I had. Uh, otherwise, uh, they would have been saying the opposite. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm listening to them. And they're talking about, yeah, you see this guy uh, kick kick out from his backside. I'm glad. And I'm thinking to myself, oh man, he got into another fight. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm like thinking, <laughs> I can't believe this guy. You know, yeah, he, yeah. he got into another freaking fight. Yeah. So, I'm really curious now. You know. I don't want to get into another fight. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. on a ferry boat <laughs> with these guys. I don't know who. You, you're kind of that way as a New Yorker. You know, if you're a New Yorker, you don't want to ask more than you have to. That's you know, right. I mean, that's a good and a bad thing, too. It's a bad thing sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I remember ESPN over the 18 years, 19 years uh, doing, and even more, 21 years, I get doing the broadcast, uh, flying every week in and out of different small little towns down south, North Carolina, South Carolina you know, Iowa. I mean, all these yeah. little times, we, we, you'd, you'd get off the plane, you'd be walking down somewhere, good morning. I, I look behind me. Who, 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 who you? Hello. Who, me? You say hello? Uh, uh, hello. Like like you're afraid to say hello. Like nobody says hello. Nobody no. says good morning. Not How you tr- doing? Not good day. York. Good day. What was he? Yeah, I felt like De Niro in the taxi uh, the taxi movie. Remember the well, that classic movie yeah. years ago the, with the, Taxi man, yeah. taxi driver, whatever it was, where De Niro said, you talking to me? Must be talking to me. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, uh, there's nobody else here. So, as New Yorkers, you know, we're, 
we we just don't want to talk to no one because you don't know what it's you 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 know you you're safe that way yeah so uh, i'm you know i'm saying uh, i, I want to see this but i don't freaking don't want to really let me uh, you, hey buddy you mind i saw he put the paper down could i just look at that for a second yeah and guy, thankfully, the guy goes, yeah, you know, he could have said, no, get your own paper. Yeah. That's why he is a New Yorker. You don't want to ask somebody, <laughs> can I look at your paper? Yep. You know, because it could be Camacho time again, you know. So he said, yeah, well, yeah. So I look at the paper, I open it up, and there it is. I can't believe it. And I'm really uh, embarrassed mm -hmm. because it's – there it is, the front page in the sports, or the front, the head story in the sports. Dick Young, I believe, was the columnist at that time. He was probably the biggest or one of the biggest sports writers in the country, mm -hmm. definitely in New York. He, baseball, boxing was still big. Boxing was still covered. It's not covered by box by writers anymore. It's all yeah. internet stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, was, you don't have writers that are dedicated from a newspaper to boxing anymore. But he he was, and there was his column, and it was like. You know, big. It was like something like uh, trainer puts clamps on uh, Camacho's Macho Act, something like that. And Dick Young didn't like me that. I don't think. <laughs> and he probably got to, at a press conference. Who knows what happened? And you know, Camacho again. Camacho was a great fighter, and he was he was he, you know he was he was his own personality. I mean, you know, and and um, he was a guy that pioneered a lot of stuff for boxes i mean he was you know the some of the outfits he wore i mean he wore crazy outfits but way before the crazy outfits was seen and you know he was he was a guy i don't know you call him a trailblazer but I, I, he was a world champion so he there's there's all of, we're not knocking him this he comes from where he comes from and this is the way that he identified himself but this was also a guy of substance that he could get in the ring and do what he did mm -hmm. you know so i don't want it to come off the wrong way but uh, but you know we can all act a little foolish sometimes mm -hmm. and, and get a little whatever carried away and uh but so i see it and i see oh it's the story about what happened mm -hmm. and i'm like oh. And then you know why I felt embarrassed? I felt like he's going to think I told the story. Yes. And like I'm bragging. And there's nothing to brag about. Mm -hmm. it. What happened, happened. Mm -hmm. Could have been the other way too. I wouldn't want a story written about it if mm -hmm. it was the other way. Mm -hmm. And I did. I felt I felt that way. I really did. I, I felt like almost if I would have had his phone number, I probably wouldn't have done it. But I'd call him up and say, look, I didn't. I just want you to know. I, I didn't, didn't contribute to I this story. This, yeah. You know? I mean, but anyway, that wasn't going to happen. So I go, I go now, I'm, I'm in my own little thoughts now, and I get off, I get on the subway, and I go, I go to the New York Commission, mm -hmm. and I go upstairs, I walk into the weigh-in room, and there's all these fight people, mm -hmm. and they all start clapping, because again, they felt like, they read the paper, they heard about it, and they're all clapping, I felt like an idiot, but they're all clapping because they, they didn't, not that they hated Camacho, it's just they sometimes hated the way that he acted. Mm. Is that fair? To, yeah, I, guess? I know, I know exactly what you mean. And um, maybe you know, maybe sometimes they felt too that they were kind of left out, mm -hmm. that they that they were beneath him mm -hmm. in the way when they were in the room with him. I don't know. Yeah. But and again, that can happen. And uh, so they all start clapping. I'm like, oh, <laughs> the freak, you know? Yeah. So, but the craziest thing was, so we get and I'm like, I'm oh man. You know, I got a fight, so I got a fight that night. I think the weigh in was the same day it was back in those days. The weigh in would be the same day as the fight, mm -hmm. not the day before. So, I'm pretty sure I'm accurate about this. So, that night, I got to go to the fell form. So, the usual thing I leave tickets for my wife, mm -hmm. and um, my wife uh goes to the will call to get the tickets so she i didn't tell her nothing about this she don't read the new york post mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i got through the baby oil stuff you know <laughs> so she don't know nothing about this mm -hmm. you know so why are you gonna be talking about this right so she's online waiting with whoever's there with her and she's waiting and she gets to the to the uh front and she says uh tickets six tickets whatever it was i don't know what i left for her and whoever was with her 
my family. Six tickets for for uh, Teddy Atlas, you know, under Teddy Atlas. And um, one of the guys, all five fans, obviously, mm-hmm. right? The, they're they're not, you know, they're not there to, uh, you know, to see, uh, you know, Lady Gaga. Yeah. You know, they're there for the fight. So um, one of them goes, Teddy Atlas. Mm-hmm. Those tickets for Teddy Atlas? Says uh, you you with Teddy Atlas? And she turns around. You know, she says, No, I'm getting picking up the tickets. You know Teddy Atlas? So she says, Well, I'm his wife. Oh man, please tell him. Can I shake your hand? <laughs> tell him thank. You. I mean, it was a lot of people. You know, like yeah. tell. Him. And then, like again, we're gonna tell the story. People are gonna say, "Oh, gee, you didn't have." But if you're gonna tell it, you tell it. Otherwise, mm-hmm. don't tell it. Exactly. Right? The people in the line, a few of them started putting clapping a little bit. Yeah. You know, like yeah, you know, tell him good. He put him in his. You know, again. Yeah. I know where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. From people feeling that it shows you what people. You know, they they like him as a fighter, but. A lot of people think the cool thing, the good thing, the right thing is sometimes to be abrasive a little bit. Um, it's not. It, it's not. Some Listen, there's some circles that you get away with it. But people in the general, and these are regular common people that are in this line. Okay? These are the regular people. Yep. The tough people that are working nine to five jobs, trying to make it for their family, you know, uh, and... Oak and a very diverse crowd, mm-hmm. and they're, they're just saying, no, it ain't about, that's the great thing about boxing. It ain't about white or black or Spanish or, or, or Jewish or, you know, what nationality, what, what ethnic group you come from. It, it's not about any of that. It's not about any of that. It's about how you behave. It's about who you, who you are, not what you are, mm-hmm. who you are. And everyone can have a choice of that. Everyone has the control over that, who you are. We all do. Mm-hmm. I don't care if, you, if, if they invent a new race tomorrow that's purple with polka dots. And it's your choice how you represent yourself. Mm-hmm. It's your choice, the decisions you make. And these people, these common regular people that they're there paying their $20 for the ticket or whatever it was back in those days, Ten dollars, whatever. They're in the line. They're they're just saying we we respect fighters. We we come here. We come here to watch boxing, but we don't come here for the other stuff. We come here for that. Mm-hmm. We 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 care about how how you act as a fighter and how you act as a person. Mm-hmm. It matters. And it was really something. It was really something. And um, you know, in that way. But I was like I said, I was embarrassed that you know. So then, of course, my wife says, there's something you didn't tell me, obviously. <laughs> I said, remember that baby oil? <laughs> yeah, remember that the, 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 in the shirt? That's how I got it. <laughs> but um, so, you know, we, uh, there was a fight. The, the late, great Dan Duva was doing a fight up in Vinnie Pazienza country. Um, after that, up in Providence, somewhere in Rhode Island. And he was doing a show. I had a fighter fighting there. I can't remember who. But I had a fighter on the card. And uh, I had to go up there sometime after that. I don't remember how far after that. And I know a lot of people probably thinking this. That's why I'm segueing into it on my own. And have you ever seen Camacho after that? So Camacho was up there. Mm -hmm. He was up there. He wasn't fighting on the card, but I don't think he was. But he was up there. And we were walking, I was, you know, you can't control, you're walking, uh, who you're going to run into, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm walking in a walkway, you know, the tunnels in the, like in the garden, in the arena, yeah. whatever arena we were at. Um, I don't know if it was the, it was the Dunkin' Donuts Center or whatever they call that. The, but whatever arena it was where Duva had to show, I was walking in the, in the kind of in the belly of the arena, walking through one of the hallways. And who comes walking <laughs> right towards me you know Hector you know and a gentleman you know he just you know I was thinking oh you know whatever mm-hmm. and um because you'd be you know you wouldn't be alive as a person if you didn't have some awareness and um he's comes up and he we come in towards each other and he just says hey Teddy puts his hand out I said hey Hector you know that was it I think we even patted each other, might even hugged each other. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. 
to be honest. I think we did. And um, I, I was, I was, I felt terrible when I heard that he, you know, that he, um, he, he died. You know, he got shot in Puerto Rico. And I don't mm -hmm. know if everybody's aware of that. And um, I'll tell you. And again, if people take it wrong that I'm adding this on, go ahead. I don't care. Um, I just think maybe I should to understand what I'm, the feelings afterwards that, I had feelings very strong when that happened, but mm -hmm. then afterwards, they they were other feelings, you know, mm -hmm. that that belonged there for a reason, as a person. And uh, when he when he died, uh, somebody called me and asked me to help with my charity foundation, the Dr. Atlas Foundation, with his funeral. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know people are going to say, "How's that possible?" You know, he was Hector Camacho; he made a lot of money. He didn't make the money they make today, mm -hmm. but he made good money. He fought, you know, he fought Duran. He fought, you know, he beat the great Duran, I think it was. Um, right? He, uh, he fought, um, I mean, obviously he had a lot of big fights. Mm -hmm. um, and most of them on TV, a lot of them. But uh, I got a phone call that uh, they needed some help. So uh, we, we we did, you know. And um, because because he it was appropriate to help somebody, mm -hmm. especially a fighter that he he was a great fighter. He was a guy that uh, he was like I said, he was one of the fastest fighters I ever saw. You know, he beat guys like Bazooka Lamon and uh, tough guys, but he was too fast for them. Mm -hmm. You know, and those guys Bazooka Lamon back in the eighties, uh, Bobby Chacon, Bazooka Lamon. Boza Cornelius, Boza Edwards, they they were all involved in some great fights, mm -hmm. tough guys, great fights. I mean, really unbelievable fight. But Camacho was above all of them because of his his talents. You know, he was, and then he beat Edwin Rosario, who was a great fighter, great puncher, great puncher. Jimmy Jacobs had him. Uh, there was talk about me training him at one point. Jimmy Jacobs, who was basically co partners with Cousin, later on managed, of course. Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. there was, he had me taking Spanish lessons for a while. When I used to take my amateur kids down to the Bronx to, mm -hmm. to every week uh, to the smokers to get experience, I was Tyson was one of them mm -hmm. at one point, and I was developing them every week going down there. I He hired me a Spanish tutor for a while <laughs> that I was supposed to learn Spanish because I was going to train all his Spanish fighters. Mm -hmm. Edwin Rosario, um, there was another guy, uh, Oh man, he was a good fighter too, but he didn't go to the to the height that Rosario went. But it never it never went. I learned the Rachel, that's a right hand, the Rachel, mm -hmm. you know. Uh Fuente strong. <laughs> you know. <laughs> few things. And I, I was around all the great Spanish people for years. I mean, at the smokers and in my sport and my business. I mean, a lot of them were brothers to me. Those in Cuevas who ran the Apollo Boxing Club where uh, I would take my kids to get experience. Tyson probably got about 20 fights in that place or somewhere in that neighborhood yeah. or, or on his way up as a kid. Um, he got a lot of his amateur fights there at the beginning. But, um, you know, so, uh, like I said, it just uh, bringing back memories, thinking about, uh, but at, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, that's uh, that's the story. That's a good story, and if you like that, guys, there's a ton of stories like that, especially about the smokers down in the Bronx in your early days living up in Catskill. I remember, I'll tell you a quick one. Mm. Well, when when I would be the matchmaker down there, and I was, and I was probably the only uh, white guy in the place, mm. and I brought all my kids down there, white kids, black kids, all the kids that were my, and down there, you know, we were the probably a lot of times the only white kids in a place mm -hmm. right? and just there was a camaraderie there was a brotherhood really really was I remember they had a New Year's party and, and after we were there we were there for years you know yeah. every, going. Uh, they, they all asked us won't you come to a New Year's party you know and um, and so yeah, we'll come. So we came down. And they said, we know it's a long way. We we know it's, you know, it's like eight hours. No, it's two and a half hours. Like, But in their mind, yeah. like Catskill, Bronx, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catskill, Bronx, <laughs> you, we know it's going to take you. You have to leave day before. No, <laughs> no, we'll, we'll be there. We'll yeah. be there, you know, just beautiful. And anyway, the 
side people don't see. And but I remember the first time I um. I, we would make a sheet, and you would put the the weight, the age, the amount of fights, and everyone lied. Yeah, everyone lied. Everybody wanted an edge, so you had to learn the formula. Yeah, like if somebody said they had no fights, they had three. Yeah, you know, if somebody said they had three, they had eight to ten. Yeah, if anybody admitted that they had like six or seven, they <laughs> they could go, be anywhere from like semi pro to yeah. I mean, you 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 could be fighting in a garden. <laughs> I, I mean, God knows, you know what I mean. Yeah. But you knew the form; you had to learn the form. Yeah. You know what I mean. So everything. So I would put a. It was ridiculous to put it together, but I put it together because you had to be organized. Yeah, you had to have something to figure things out with, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So I would put the columns, and I put you know how how many fight you know and go through all that stuff. How old you know, and um you know some of these guys you know they they gave their age away if they took a shower. You say he's not eleven. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the real world yeah, we're yeah, living. Yeah. It's tough, <laughs> you know. And you know, like keep your armpits down. You know what I mean? Keep yeah. your arms down when you go. You know, don't show that you, you that you're not ten. And uh, you know, and so, but we got through it. You know, yeah. and and we developed kids and fighters and men and and stuff. But there was one time I brought Tyson down. I was there for years before Tyson came along. And yeah. then now, you know, after me being there years, I get I get Tyson. Mm -hmm. And you know, I bring him in his first fight. You know, he's twelve years old. He's one hundred ninety pounds, solid. You mm -hmm. know, it wasn't long after that he was two ten. Mm -hmm. You know, and he was thirteen years old. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fourteen. But but people. So I came in and and all my brothers, they all my Spanish brothers, everybody there. And when it comes time, and they go, "Okay, who your new guy, Teddy?" You know. And I'm sorry, my Spanish putting on that accent. It's not, I'm sorry, I'm not, but uh, Teddy, who who you know, uh, Mike Tyson, uh, you know, oh, he's big, strong, strong. Uh, how old? Seventeen, eighteen, twenty, uh, twelve. Oh, Teddy, now you now you lie. That's you lie more than us. <laughs> <laughs> no, you lie more than we. We all lie a little bit, Teddy. But now you lie more. <laughs> I said, listen, Nelson, all you guys, you know, Louis, Luis, Angel, I ain't believe what you want to believe. I'm telling you, I know. Okay, I say he's 18. You feel, but yo, we know he's 18. <laughs> I say he's not. He's 12. <laughs> You know, but I mean, it was part of the, and it's all in a book. Yeah, I mean, all these stories, it's it's all out there. It's all in a book, and um, except about the shower part, you know, where we <laughs> had to leave some stuff out. <laughs> well, anyway, those stories are great. The book has a ton of them, and I'm I'm excited to listen to the new content myself. So you guys can check it out on um. Check it out at Amazon, audible.com. You can actually download it for free if you sign up for a 30-day trial at um, audible.com. Thanks for doing this, Teddy. I know you were reluctant. and uh, hope I'm, people will understand it and appreciate it the right way. Yeah. I, I, no, I, facts I just are facts. Yeah. But, listen, the truth is the truth, but you don't always have to tell it. That's you don't true. always have to say the story. That's you fair. Know? And, and we are saying it because with the book and and – Listen, you talked me into it, but that's not BS anybody. If mm -hmm. I didn't want to do it, I wouldn't do it. That's right. Right? So we're, we're, we're doing it. But um, I hope people appreciate it. We're, like I said, I hope it's understood in the right way, in the respectful way for a man who's not here with us. Yep. Well, thanks for doing it. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you like the story, please check out the book um, available on Amazon. And um, thanks for being with us. 